call this uh, meeting of the Oversight Investigations Committee to order. Uh, good morning. I am Councilmember Vincent Gentili, the Chair of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Council, member, Council Members Bill Perkins, Council Member Kaim Deutsch, and Council Member Rory Lansman. Um, we may be joined in a few minutes by some others. Uh, today, the committee will be voting on introduction 1136A, sponsored by our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. Intro 1136A will require that the New York City Law Department provide semi-annual reports on information pertaining to civil actions filed against the Department of Corrections and the Department's employees dating back to the previous five years, which include civil rights claims involving alleged federal, state, or city statutory constitutional violations. These reports will be posted on the Law Department's website and provided to the controller, the Department of Corrections, Department of Investigation, and the Board of Correction. This bill was first heard in committee in May 2016, and an A version of the bill resulted from that hearing. The A version of Intro 36, A1136, which we're voting on today, not only extends the time frame of the reporting requirement to the previous five years, but also removes the requirement of reporting on the plaintiff's race and gender, the rank and years of service of any DOC employee defendants, the nature and summary of the allegations contained in each claim, the reason why the department declined to represent a defendant, and whether the defendant had previously been subject of actions claiming improper conduct. Those items in the original bill were amended and not part of the A version. These changes in this bill derived from last May's hearing will solidify the intent of this bill. By expanding information sharing between agencies, this legislation aims to facilitate the identification and remediation of trends in correction officer misconduct. Consequently, the data obtained from the updated reports intends to improve DOC policies and procedures. I believe intro 1136A has the potential to ensure safer jails citywide and reduce costs that arise from various lawsuits. Therefore, I recommend a yes vote by my fellow committee members. And if any members have any questions on the bill, we can entertain them now. Seeing none, where did our, where did our quorum go? One quick question, if I may. Yeah. Uh, so at, at the, um, regarding the information being reported, uh, um, is that readily, publicly, more or less available, or is this, how is this report transparent in terms of public yeah. interest? It's my understanding that the, the information is foilable. Foilable? Mm -hmm. That's what I understand, and I, I, I don't know the details of it, but I understand that the, the controller's office also has uh, pertinent information. This, this is a reporting bill um, that a DOC would have to do to the various um, um, institutions so that, so that trends in lawsuits can become apparent. So, so the, 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 I guess the, the reason that why the dependent declined to represent a defendant and whether the defendant had previously been subject of actions claiming improper conduct, that information is still is available too with this report? Uh, no, it, it is not in this bill. It may be that, available somewhere else, but it's not in this bill. I mean, it's not required to be right. available because it, that, that's what I was concerned about because why the department declined to represent the defendant could be important to know mm -hmm. from a public point of view, especially when sometimes folks think that, that we turn a blind eye. Yeah, no, I, I understand. To, to stuff in order not to blemish the, right. the reputation of the institution or... That, that's others. not a requirement of reporting under this bill, but if an action has been resolved, then the manner in which it was resolved and whether the resolution included a payment to the plaintiff uh, and the amount of the payment is a requirement of this bill. Okay, but this other part of it, like whether or not this, the, 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 the defendant was previously subject to actions claiming improper conduct is... Right, that was amended. That was amended. So that's no longer... No, in, right. And what, right. do you know the reason why we would take that out? 
Um, I, I think, uh, if, and I don't know, I wasn't part of the negotiations, but my, my guess is that this bill's intent was to show trends of, of, of lawsuits, patterns okay. of, uh, of misconduct at certain institutions or repeated same types of misconduct. So th that information wasn't particularly relevant for those purposes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, here, uh, seeing no other questions, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Committee Clerk Matthew DiStefano, Committee on Oversight and Investigations. Roll call on intro no number 1136A, Chair Gentili. I vote on. Doish. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Perkins. Aye. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the item has been adopted. Thank you all. We'll hold the vote open for another 15 minutes. But thank you all for joining us.